Last week, the former England manager Graham Taylor passed away at the age of 72. His achievement in lifting Watford from the fourth division to runners-up in the top flight marked him out as a special talent. He was saluted at grounds across England last weekend. A man who was a, had a big passion, was brave, competent, absolutely totally focused on, on the game and it's a very sad day for English football. He was well liked, well respected and um, thought of in a, in a fond light. He was a truly great football man and I think people in football respected him very highly. Fantastic person. In honour of Graham, we now reflect on his career through the eyes of the man himself in an interview he did with Premier League World just over a year ago. Now, there's one man called Jim McGuigan, and if anybody inspired me to go into management, it would be Jim. When I look back on my career as a player, Jim taught me so much. And uh, at that time at Grimsby, I was a player for Grimsby Town, and he made me the captain of the side. I was young to go into management at the time, I was 27. And one day, I, there were 23 players on Lincoln City's squad. And one day I'm one of those 23, and the next day I'm the manager of 22. All of a sudden I have to, from where we're known by nicknames, we have laughs and jokes with one another, I have to make it clear that I am now the manager, I am now the boss. I think if I'd known what the differences were, I might have said no to the job, because there are massive differences. As a club level, you are still held responsible for results, but if you've had a bad show on a Saturday, the following Wednesday you can perhaps put it right because you've got another game. If you have a bad showing at international level on a Wednesday in midweek in, let's say, November, you may not play again until February. And so that lasts all of that time, the bad performance. Even I didn't realise what a difference there would be between being a club manager and the international manager. And I have to say this, if I had known the effect, I probably would not have taken the job. I say probably not, because how can you turn the England job down? They're going to get at all of us, aren't they, unless we score goals. So it's as simple as that. It was a big body blow to me. I'd been successful as a club manager, and all of a sudden you're not qualifying for the World Cup. Not only do you have the supporters at the ground telling you what you should do, you have all the people who are watching it on the television in their own homes telling you what you should have done. That's as a manager. When the game is won, the players have won it. When the game is lost, the manager's lost it. It's a strange profession, believe me. This was the first club after my spell as England, and if anybody wanted to come back into the big time, surely they must understand it would have been me. It was the biggest disappointment. Whilst the players were disappointed, justifiably so, while the supporters were disappointed, nobody seemed to think or understand that I would be disappointed more than anybody else. We'd been playing in the Football League Division 2, and then we went to the Championship, and then we came up to the Premiership. But we had to start with a group of players that, that were not good enough for the Premiership. They'd had successive promotions, and they were not used to losing. And all of a sudden, and I may have been part of it myself, was that I don't think we could cope with the losing. The joy unconfined on the pitch and in the stands. The thing that pleased me was that the players never gave up. The players that I had never gave up and I would never blame them. It's through the defenders as if they're not there. And the goalkeeper, what a sensational goal from Thierry Henry. No sympathy at all from Arsenal. Poor old Watford. Every picture tells a story. I think I would have regretted later on in my life turning down the opportunity of something I didn't think would come, that is to manage a leading Premiership club. I'd retired from the game at, um, at Watford. And when I retired, the first man to phone me was Doug Ellis of Aston Villa. He asked me to be a director at Aston Villa. 
and John Gregory was the manager, and I said to Doug, look, there is no way I'm going to take over as your manager with John. You know, you're not into the business of sacking John, because if you do, you won't appoint me. What then happened was that John left Aston Villa of his own accord. It was proven and shown to me that Aston Villa hadn't sacked him. I did, didn't enjoy it. We finished about 15th or 16th in the league, but I didn't enjoy it because I, I didn't feel that it was the thing I needed or wanted. I had an opportunity then to come out of the game. I had a newspaper that was employing me to write an article for them, the Daily Telegraph, and I could see then why some of the things were written. So it taught me a lot about the game itself just by being outside the game. Every club that I've worked for, I feel an association with. So in that respect, you know, I've Lincoln, I've Watford, Aston Villa, Wolverhampton Wanderers, and of course the England situation. You can't help but look at that as well. well the last time that Watford finished in the top half of the uh, top division was back in 1987 under the auspices of Graham Taylor here today. The target for the long kick gets his head to it. Eagle all! The wait is ended. Vicarage Road celebrates the first goal back in the Premier League. They announce their arrival back in the big time. I think you've got to be like a good dad. You've got to be strong enough to be able to have the last say, providing it's a truthful one and a proper one. The whole of football, of course, has been in mourning following the sad, sudden loss. Graham Taylor, only 72. And here at Vicarage Road is probably where his loss will be felt the most keenly. He spent 15 full seasons here over two spells. His achievements in that first spell will go down in history. Well, Graham, you've still got a smile on your face. Well, Assess you tonight. To no, you've got to keep smiling, haven't you?